everybody. We're here from, well, I'm here from moviecoin.com, uh, seeing as this is a bit of a funny time with crypto at the moment, um, but, you know, nothing's certain, but we're here building uh, a, our cryptocurrency in a bit of a bear market. So we started moviecoin.com in 2016. Basically, we found a niche, or we thought there was a niche, in movie funding, because funding movies is typically requires um, a lot of liquid cash, um, and it's been harder and harder to come by. So we set up a, a platform where anybody can go to moviecoin.com, upload pictures from their film, or it, it could just be a script, pages of the script, and we automatically convert those uh, to NFTs. People can buy those NFTs, and they then get a profit share in the film. So um, we have got lots of movies on there, but the latest one is called Prize Fighter. Uh, it's starring Russell Crowe. And we funded a small percentage of Prize Fighter. Um, the other lead actor is this man, Matt Hookins. Um, so yes, I'm here with Matt because he's he's also set up a uh, film production company in Malta, um, and um, we've had a kind of successful launch. The film has been successful, and also the funding of the film through MovieCoin.com has been successful. So. Um, yeah, so um, my name is Matt Hookins. I run a production company called Camelot, Camelot Films in the UK and Camelot Media in Malta. Um, I've made three, four films in Malta in the last couple of years. Um, the, you know, the tax credit and the system here is so good. And when the opportunity came along to partner with James on crypto and a sort of different variation of funding with films, it uh, became very interesting, as James said. It's incredibly difficult to put together all the finance for filming. Um, so when you have a, a, a film like Prize Fighter, which is basically a boxing film, true story boxing film set in the 1800s with Russell Crowe and Ray Winston, um, it attracted a certain amount of um, appeal, especially in the, in the form of NFTs and different things that we could utilize as another source of funding. So, like James mentioned, it's NFTs, it's, you know, unreleased stills, it's designed NFTs of, you know, Russell Crowe as a, as a boxer and Ray Winston, we've got props and, and scripts and signed boxing gloves and everything. So, I think um, we didn't really know at the time what we were kind of putting together. We thought, oh yeah, we'll just, we'll just do it and see what happens, but it, it turns out um, it's one of the first films to have, have successfully you know, engaged in a, in, a, in a cryptocurrency and NFT status. And the film's pretty big, you know, the film's on Amazon, it's, it's, it's around the world um, in cinemas, and in the UK and US, Amazon bought it as, a, as an original film. So it's, it's almost first of its kind in the sense that it's, it's not a small independent film, it's not a major, major, you know, studio Hollywood film, but it does open the... Um, the opportunities to fund films in a very different way. And obviously, you know, you can take that into the metaverse and lots of other areas as well. So that's, um, that's how we kind of came together on that. Um, yeah, so anybody can basically go to moviecoin.com now. Um, yesterday, we put up another 20 NFTs from the film Prize Fighter. Anybody can buy those NFTs. And then you have a share, a profit share forever in the movie. If Matt actually sold... Um, Central American rights to Amazon. Uh, Price fighters in cinemas now in Mexico. So normally, to buy a profit share in a movie, you'd have to put in minimum $100,000. But with, with moviecoin.com, you can put in $10, $20. Uh, you can buy it as a present for somebody, buy one of those NFTs, and you then own forever a profit share of, of, of that movie. So this is just one example, really, on one way um, of using kind of Web3. Because I think that's the thing that the issue everybody's having at the moment is, you know, what are the use cases and where is it being used? Because most infrastructure, I don't know, it, is this like, is everyone techie here or not that techie? But, sorry, can you put your hand up if you're like, you know what DNS is? Domain name service. Okay, yeah, so it's kind of, okay, half, kind of half and half. Yeah, so it's not really, Web3 isn't really fully being used yet. Like, not, I mean, I looked at Metaverse, uh, MetaSales yesterday, I have the Meta2 which is Facebook's um, you know, virtual reality headset. And they sold about two million, two million head-mounted displays, which is a, like a really good number. So it is kind of reaching a bit more now of a, of a wider adoption. Meta 3 just came out, the, the, the latest uh, head-mounted display. Um, 
Uh, Sony's just patented um, soft cell lens, which are contact lenses with, with full playback. So it is getting like, to become an easier to use experience and, and more as immersive experiences. And as Matt said, we've actually um, streamed Prize Fighter in, in the metaverse. So, I mean, it sounds kind of cool, but you could just go to a big room and a big cinema like this. So we're just adding those user cases. And for us at the moment, that's being able to uh, invest a small amount into a movie and, and, ha and have a profit share of that movie for forever. But it can be applied to anything, the platform that we've built. It can be applied to, to um, property. So you could buy a big piece of real estate and you could fractionalize the bricks, for example, as NFTs in, in, in the property. You know, you could, do, could, be, could be done with pretty much any asset. I mean, when James came to me, uh, it was last year actually at Sigma. We were here and James was setting up MovieCoin. And I thought, oh God, stupid idea. <laughs> because I just thought, how, how is this going to work? And actually, you know, I think one of the, one of the key areas that NFTs and funding into films can work is because of the nature of films. You know, people look at films as a kind of, you know, a, a, almost like a sex, sexy job in a way. And there's lots of different areas where, you know, you can bring in different aspects and appeals. Like I mentioned with the NFTs, you can have lots of different areas. You know, we even looked at doing, um, you know, a, a live video stream with Russell Crowe and different members of the cast. So I think it's got a lot of, um, it's got a lot of potential. Um, and we, you know, James put it to the test. He, he put a couple of NFTs up before the film got released. I think it was in, was it May? No. Yeah, May. May, yeah. He put a couple of uh, NFTs up and one of them was just props and a clapperboard. It, you know, it was worth nothing um, in terms of you know, our cost to actually purchase these items. But there was a, there was a, you know, they, they were bought and they were bought for a considerable amount of money. So that was before the film got released. When you put it together and you, you, you put together a proper structure, which is what we're doing here, we, we're basically setting up, you know, we've got Camelot and MovieCoin set up here, which we're going to be having our own NFT you know, crypto section that's going to help fund films and projects moving forward. So I think, um, you know, even though the market is somewhat um, <laughs> diminished um, over the last couple of months, I think the, the idea and the appetite is still there. It's just got to figure itself out and be done properly. Yeah, and the, the budget of um, Prize Fighter, was it 10 million? Oh, 18. It's just slightly wrong there. Okay, 18 million. So Matt's working on his next movie now. He's made five movies in five years, all in Malta, because of the uh, working with the Malta Film Commission. Um, and Matt's working on his next movie now, which is a much bigger action movie. So, and again, that would partly be funded using uh, Web3 cryptocurrency. So yeah, if anybody's got an idea for a script or you know a documentary or a TV series, you can just upload part pages of the script. We, they're automatically put onto uh, a platform, OpenSea. Um, where, where they can be sold, and you as the creator will forever get a percentage of the sales of that, of that NFT. So I think NFT, the kind of word's going to become, all right, we've got one minute left, it's going to become a bit synonymous, I think, and other words will be used, whether they're tokenized or badges, some, some, something else, and I think they'll be used much more frequently in everyday life, but without the sort of the, the, the acronym attached. So, um, yeah, we've got one minute left. Just, has anybody got any, uh, any questions on anything to do with uh, sort of crypto or NFTs or uh, funding something with those? Nice and easy. Yeah. No? Easy. <laughs> <laughs> yes? How the implication of blockchain could take these things to the next level, right? Well, I'll let James talk about the blockchain, but the, it, it's, I used to use that at the beginning. It's, it's, you know, it's almost like crowdfunding on steroids in a weird way um, because it has, a, it has a crowdfunding aspect to it. I think the crowdfunding aspect ah, is kind of diminished a little bit over the years, and, and crowdfunding was very much for... Ah, there was only a couple of really high-level projects and films that were funded on crowd, using crowdfunding platforms. So the idea is to get this you know, set up into the space where the studios and everyone, everyone's using it, using crypto, using NFTs, whereas the crowdfunding was a lot for very small independent projects. Um, I'll let uh, yeah, sorry, just a yeah, good question. Just to answer that, so Indiegogo was a really popular Kickstarter and Kickstarter were, were very popular. But with adding Web3, with NFTs, every person that sells that share of the movie the originator gets a percentage, and that's, that, that's, that wasn't possible on Indiegogo. Plus, all of ours is backed by a token called Movie, so you can buy and sell the actual token, 
um, which again is something in Indy wouldn't do, which would give you an overall profit share of all the movies uh, uh, together, not, not just one of them. So they're the kind of two key technical benefits.